Hi, welcome back. Today we're not going to talk about our 3D scanners. Actually, today I want to introduce you a software we recently developed called Revel Measure. So from the name, you'll probably know it's a measuring metrology software. And if you have basics in the GeoMagic Rab, you probably know what I'm talking about. So uh, here, let me show you the, the basic function of it. So as a measure software, widely used in GDNT. So this is what you're gonna do most of the time. You import a scan and you import a CAD file as reference. So here I prepared two files for you. First is a scan file. This file can be uh, used directly from, like exported from the Revel scan, the Revel Metro scanning software by like STL, the OBJ and POI, all mainstream formats. So let me import the scan file as a typical blue color, and you know it's a, a scan. And here, import a reference, a CAD file, normally ended in the point .stp format. And here we have it. That's the STP CAD file. So the first thing you want to do is you go to comparison, and align the scan and the CAD file together by using either automatically alignment or multi-point selection, the manual alignment. In this case, we just use automatic alignment and software will just align the two files for us. And we have it. So here uh, from the appearance, the visual effect, you can already see there are some deviation from the different color of the one of the surfaces kind of off compared to the other, right? But in order to clearly see that, here is this, the overall deviation. Here we create an overall deviation. And we have it. Uh, as you can see, the color, the red color means how much it's the plus point uh, two millimeter, and the blue color means minus two millimeter, the deviation. But this number is rather big for us to do the, the, the real overall deviation. So here is what you can do. Click this deviation map settings, and the range value, we change it to a rather let's say 0 0.2 millimeter, which pretty much makes sense, right? And also you can choose the maximum value color or the minimum value color based on what you like. And by default, normally we set it as red and blue. Click OK. And now you have a clear view, see what's going on with the overall deviation here. Okay, now first function, let me show you this. Let's close that. Here, the point deviation. You can calculate the point deviation by simply double click on any point you would like to measure. And here is, I really like this new software we created. It's, this is really user friendly. I mean, literally it's the fifth time I opened this software. Like here, I especially like this. On the bottom line, here are some hints like how you can operate, t telling you how to operate the the 3D model, and for every operation you will need to do here, like it always give you a hint on how you can <clears throat> click on the on the 3D model, like here, double click to view the, the points of deviation, like for example here, we want a one, want a two, three. And here, you just simply hold and drag the box so that you can see it better. can always create multiple points as you want. And now we have it. And here are something you can do is this little eye icon. You can click that to hide or display all these numbers you are doing. Okay, now let's go to the GDNT. 
hit measure. Here are the features we support: point, uh, straight line, circle, sphere, plane, and cylinder. So let's go one by one. For example, here the circle. To create a circle, you simply click, and here you can. This is how you can create from. You can choose a smart fit, and if you have a CAD file, you can directly choose this create from CAD, or you can fit by selected points. So in this case, we just choose create from CAD, and very simple. You just click somewhere near the circle, and hit create, and you have it. Like you can click create multiple circles if you want. So now we have three circles. So for the circles, a typical thing you can do is calculate the circularity. Let's say is how perfect the circle is. If you want a further description, you can just hold your mouse on this function button, and you will see the description. The form error of circular features and their cross-sectional circles. And to calculate that, simple, go to circularity. You can just select a feature. Let's say,、uh, for example, circle two, and input a tolerance. A tolerance value is a value that you would accept. For instance, let's choose zero point two millimeter as the tolerance and hit measure. And immediately you will have it. The tolerance is we said is zero point two millimeters. The deviation we calculated by the software is zero point one thirty nine. So the inspection is a pass. So that's how you do it, and you can also batch hide all of these,、uh, all of the data, these these boxes on by clicking the eye icon on the on the left side. Okay, now let's do something fun. Is now let's do select three planes. First is the top plane, and the two planes on the side. Let's say plane two. And、uh, playing three. Okay, now we have it. So next, let me show you this function parallelism. Just say how parallel two surfaces are. And for this case, we want to calculate plane two and plane three. So simple. We just click, choose plane two. However, in the datum, we cannot select. Now is plane three is not there. And if you want to see a description, you can also put your mouse there. So a datum means a feature, a standard feature or a principle. Let's say the datum feature is a specific feature used as a measurement standard. To create a datum, or let's say set a plane as datum, is simple. You just also it tells you how to select a set a datum on that. So now we want to calculate plane two and three. We just right-click plane three and give it a name. Let's say X. And now you can see X from the datum select list. And again, a tolerance we like 0.2 millimeters and hit measure. And we have it. It's a pass. Okay. Now.、Uh, Uh, and, and you can not only hide or display with the icon eye icon here. You can also do it right in the the main page. Look, that's how it works. So next, let me show you angularity. So it describes the error between a feature and a specified datum by an axis at a speci specified angle. So in this case, we do a let's say plane one and plane two. And of course, in order to do that, we also need to set plane two as datum. Let's say、uh, datum y. Hit y, and you don't have to worry about the set angle because the software will automatically read the angles from the CAD file. So it should be 90 degrees. So we want to see the GDNT. We just do another tolerance we set 0.2 and hit measure. As you can see, it's a fail, which means the deviation is. Number is larger than the tolerance we set. Or、oh, we could we could try again. Let's say a、uh, plane one and plane three as x. Same thing. So as you can see, the angularity measurement two is a pass. So 
That's the angularity. Okay, let me just hide it. And now true position. Let's uh, do a sphere here. Look, there are two typical balls on it. We'll just create a sphere. Let's say sphere one. So now let's calculate true position. True position means the position error of a selected feature based on three datums. Pretty, pretty clear, right? So let's see uh, the sphere one we created and we use plane one, two, three as three datums to calculate the, the true position of it. Uh, and again, we need to select plane one as a datum. Let's choose Z. So just X, Y, and Z. Again, let me set a value of 0 0.2 millimeter and hit measure. So we cannot select that as a system because those two planes are too similar. So let's choose another plane. Let's do a, a plane four. Okay, and set plane four as a datum, let's say W. Now again, let's go to true position. Sphere one, so W, uh, Z, and a X. And now the true position we have is a fail. Okay. Now, hold on. Now, let me hide all that. And flatness is pretty simple. It's just how flat a, a plane uh, or a surface is. Let's just say uh, plane one and set a tolerance of 0 0.2 and hit measure. And we have it. It's a pass. Okay, now cylindricity. This is typically for cylinders. So now let's create cylinder three cylinders, let's say cylinder one, two, and three. Let's hide the plane one, hide the flatness one. Okay, cylinder one. And a cylinder two here, and a cylinder three. So let's calculate the cylindricity of one of the cylinders. Let's do a cylinder one. Again, set value 0 0.2 and hit measure. We have a fail. How about cylinder two? Another fail is cylinder three, which is a pass. So cylinder three is pretty much the, a perfect cylinder we have here. All right, Let's, uh, just hide that. And now we want to calculate the, the concentricity of the two cylinders. For example, cylinder one, uh, cylinder two and three, and again, we need to select cylinder three as a datum. Let's just pick a random number. And if you notice that all the number, uh, the letter you set for datum will disappear from the list. So you will never get confused, which is pretty cool. So cylinder three, oh, actually cylinder two and cylinder three, and value 0 0.2. And it's a pass. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to calculate the distance of two planes. So let's, uh, let's, again, let's enable all the planes here. Plane one, two, three, and four. So we wanna create another plane, let's say say plane, plane five, create. And let me hide one, two, three. And let me drag the plane four here, plane five here. Okay, so to calculate the distance, simple, we just hit distance and we choose plane four and a plane five. And the tolerance, now you see two numbers here because now we want to calculate both minus and plus. So let's do a 
minus 0 0.2 and a plus 0 0.2. Let's hit measure. And you see a pass here. So the tolerance we said is 0 0.2. The reference is the distance of plane 4 and 5 from the CAT file, which is exactly exact 200 millimeters. While the, the real measurement from the 3D scan file is 199.93. Well, let's just do a quick test. Let's just do 0 0.02. 0 0.02, 4 and 5, and hit measure, you will see that now it's a fail because the real deviation we have is 0 0.03. So that's almost, uh, that's mo almost every function I've showed you in the Revel measure. After you, after you finished your, uh, or your calculation, you, you can hit this, generate report. You can get a file name, like for example, ash1117. You can save path to the report here. And the company, let's do a uh, rubber point. Department, we'll say uh, video production. Project name, part name, you can just say that. And also you can show to disable or enable any content that you wanted to be included in your report and just hit export. And here we go, we have it. And the report is, includes a lot of data that you will be need. Like overall deviation, the point deviation we calculated, the circle one, the circle one properties, all the way to the, all the planes, the sphere, the cylinders, and here are the GDNT part, the circularity we calculated, parallelism we, we got, and they are all automatic. You can just get this report by simply clicking export. So it will significantly improve your workflow efficiency. Huh? And of course you can trust this Revo measure it's because we did send them to Germany, get it certified in PTB. Metrology Institute, and here are the result. This is what Revel measure has. It's within or less than 0 0.1 mu m and 0 0.1 u rad. So definitely it's a software you can trust. And now we are about to start the, put the Revel measure on shelf. The pricing will be $499 per year for one year license, which is a really great price. And for three year license is gonna be 999. And of course a lifetime license will be $1,999. And for the updates before uh, for 1.x version, now it's 1.0 version for Revel Measure. So for 1.x, you always get free, free upgrade within your, experience, your license date. Okay, hope you like this software. Let me know. See you next time.